Welcome back to another episode of Man vs. Meeple, the show where we talk about everything board game related. I am your host, Jeremy Salinas, a.k.a. Dragon Strike, and we have an incredible show for you today as we take a look at the networks by Formal Fair Games. Before we get to this, let me introduce you to my co-host and friend, David Waybright. Hello again, everyone. Uh, we're really excited to talk about this. Yeah. It, uh, if you couldn't figure it out, it's about television, which is probably my second favorite hobby, um, <laughs> and, and America's. Uh, believe me, I have to pull him away from television. <laughs> I asked him to do some work for me last night, and all he wanted to do was watch, what, Stranger Things Stranger on Netflix? Things on Netflix. If yeah. you haven't watched it, watch it. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, we're, we're going to talk about the networks today. Again, before we get to our review, we just want to say, again, thank you for everyone who's been subscribing and liking us on Facebook. Uh, keep it coming. We really appreciate it. We're going to try to keep good and better, but thank you very yeah. much. And don't forget to make a comment on this video below, because once again, this is a review, and we will be giving away a copy of the networks. Yeah, I you don't want to miss it. Yeah, you don't want to miss it. I will announce the end time on that. Uh, in the review uh, description, so make sure you check that out and make a comment below to be entered to win a copy of the network. So uh, let's get right into the game. Uh, the Networks is a one to five player economic card drafting game that challenges its players to effectively launch new competing television networks by scheduling uh, three time slots for prime time programming, which uh, have to have the best shows, the best stars, and the best ads in order to generate a large amount of viewers into their network, which are effectively the victory points in the game. Right. The, it, everything revolves around the viewers, just like if you're running a network. That's the one thing that's great about this game is it really captures that theme very well. Everything you're doing you can relate to as a network executive might. Yeah, and, and it's uh, it looks complicated by looking at the board, but it's really not. It's 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 really trying to effectively juggle four different aspects onto your player board. Yeah, there's the there's a lot out on the there's a lot out on the table, but you're trying to grab you know, develop new shows, sign stars, get uh, land some advertising for those shows, uh -huh. uh, and then there's some other things you can do to mess with other networks. So so the shows and the stars are going to generate your viewers, because right. that's typically thematically how you get people to watch your shows, yep. right? And then the ads are going to be able to generate the money in order to sustain those Ex shows exactly. and, the, and the stars and allow you in future rounds to buy better shows and better stars, because each season the um, the shows and the stars get progressively better. Right. Correct? Yeah, you, the money is important. Uh, in fact, the money and the viewers are sort of two of the uh, main economic elements here. Right. But the money, just like in real networks, uh -huh. support is supported by the viewers. So right. if you don't have the viewers, you're not going to be making the money. And it can be tight, too. I mean, trying to juggle those limited number of resources you have, especially in the beginning of the game, you're trying to figure out what can I even afford, mm -hmm. let alone what do I really want to buy, and, and, and then putting those into your areas on the board in order to fill specific time slots. So um, I know this is confusing to you guys because we're just kind of talking about things <laughs> we like about the game already. Let's actually get into a game and tell you how all these kind of uh, components work together. Yeah, right? we'll try to get through this right away. It's, it's very simple. On your turn, you can do a number of things. You can develop a show. You can sign a star. You can land an advertising um, you can take the stars or ads from from your green room and put them on, a, assign them to a show, or you can play a network card or take a network card, which is where you can kind of mess with people. Or you but can simply drop out of the yeah the, yeah the that's right that's right you can drop out of the round. We'll get to that at the end. So so know that this is a card drafting style of game. Every round, depending on the number of players, there is a very specific number of show stars and ads and network cards that are available for people to grab so you're competing all together to grab those things and claim them before anyone else right turn order and timing is king in this game yes, because absolutely. whenever you're drafting cards and we have this set up for a three-player game but it, it there's more cards out there for even more players a little fewer for fewer obviously right uh, but if you have your eye on a show that you really want you have to consider when you're going to take that because if you don't and someone else does, it can have a significant impact right. on your score. So, as he said, one of the things you can do uh, originally is grab a show. Yep. First thing you can do is take a show. To do that, you're simply taking one of the shows, you're developing it, and you're placing one of the three shows that you have on your tableau already. Right. Now, shows cost money. So uh, there's a cost associated with the shows, and also they are very specific to certain time slots. So certain shows want to be showing at 8, 9, or 10 o'clock. Right. Like I have here, 
celebrity rhinoplasty. It's an 8 <laughs> o'clock show. So if I want to take this, I'd probably want to replace my 8 o'clock show, which currently is cooking for your gerbil. Yeah, everyone starts off with some very basic generic shows that don't give you any viewers, Yeah, they, really. they literally zero viewers, so you need to replace those shows right away. And the reason why you want to put them in some very specific time slots, for instance, the one I have here is a, uh, it's supposed to be at 10 o'clock. If I put it in the 10 o'clock time slot, it gives me seven viewers. However, if I put it in any other time slot, it only gives me five. Right. So it's not hugely important, but it can be important because scoring can be very tight in this game. Scoring is very tight, and it is important to note, too, that is just for the first season that that shows on your board. Right. The second, third, and fourth season, if you keep it that long. That's why on the right-hand side, each of these has a either, some of them go up, just like a real network show. I mean, everyone watch, most people watch TV, right? <laughs> and shows will catch on in the second season. For instance, as you see here, the first season, no one really wanted to watch it, but when it hit the second season... You know, exactly. It's, we will call it 11 million viewers watching. And this is a spoof on The Walking Dead, so it makes sense thematically yeah, to The Walking Dead, it's, right? It's part of the cool theme. Some shows come out of the gate really big. Other shows need word of mouth that first season, then the second season picks up. And you see that on the shows, and thematically they're tied with the types of shows that would normally do that. It's fantastic. And, and shows will age from round to round, so you will constantly have to juggle new shows, new stars, new ads, right. or else you're going to be losing viewers, which is thematically, once again, very much in line with what a network would do. Right, and that, and that brings us to stars. Yeah. The next thing you could do is sign a star. And again, it takes money to sign a star. Yeah. <laughs> Any actor is not going to work for free. Right. So you simply, again, take one of the stars and you add it here to your green room. You can't put a star immediately on a show. You put them in your green room and you have to immediately pay their one-time fee. But you'll note, too, on the right upper right-hand corner, there's an ongoing fee like an when they're cost. attached to a show. Yeah, it's an upkeep cost. It doesn't cost anything in your green room, but once he's attached to a show, every season you're going to have to pay that guy a million dollars. Yeah. And just to make note real quick, uh, shows don't always need a star. Shows don't always need an ad. Specific shows need very specific type of things associated with them. Right. For instance, some shows could be a drama, or they could be a comedy, or they could be a sports, and require you to have very specific people. Or the stars will be very specific to what they want to do. Some of them want to work on a comedy, some want to work on a drama, some don't want to work with anyone else but themselves. Right, and you can usually, you, most commonly you can put any star on any show, but you're going to lose a lot of the benefits from not putting a sports guy right. on a sports show. Yeah, makes sense. And one other thing to note, too, is when you do, back up for a second, when you develop a show, you do need to have stars, sort of prerequisite stars and ads. In your green room. In your green room, ready to put on the show immediately, or you can't develop and, that And you'll show. start with some very basic ones once again. Yeah. You're going to have to be recruiting these as the game goes on. Exactly. It's a, it's a, it's a nice balance. Yeah. So we've talked about how you're spending money in a network. Yeah. Now we talk about what you do to make money, and of course that's advertising. Right. So when you're landing an ad, you simply reach up, you grab one of the ad cards. Again, it goes into your green room, but this time, instead of paying money, you're getting an immediate amount of money, and it can range from a million to maybe even up three, four million dollars. Uh -huh. And then, once you attach this to a show, instead of upkeep in terms of paying money like the stars, this is going to make you money. So throughout the game, what you want to Try, want to try to do is balance the income you're getting from your ads and the money that you're paying out to your stars and your shows right. so that you're not losing money every season. And once again, ads also have benefits for doing being in specific shows. So I, oh, exactly. a lot of these have dual abilities to them. Um, some of them are just straight out ads. Some of them have special abilities attached. Yeah, there's so. a lot of little prerequisites on ads and a lot of the cards mm -hmm. that, you know, when you place this ad, for instance... You have to have it on a show in a 10 o'clock time slot, or you flip it over and it's worth a lot less money each yeah. season. Probably my favorite part of the game, though, is the network cards, <laughs> which don't attach to any show or ad or network or a uh, star. They're simply cards that you collect in your hand, um, and either they're immediate plays into the game scoring or things that really kind of interact with other players mm -hmm. in a very negative way for them. <laughs> you can right? really mess and interact. Interact yeah, with other so you're players. You're juggling. Do I need to go out there and grab a show that someone else may want, or do I want to go grab a network card with my action and be able to use? Uh, again, these resources. All four of these resources are limited round to round. So you're constantly juggling. What do I need? When do I need it? Do I want to grab something that someone else may need, or something that I need to fill to fulfill certain conditions in the game? Yeah, I think that's one of the cool things that the network cards add. Aside from what they do, the fact that there's just yet another card on the table 
really makes that decision making challenging in a fun, tense sort of way. Because you might look up at the networks card and go, oh man, I do not want Jeremy to have that because I know exactly what he's going to do with it. Yeah. But I need an 8 o'clock time slot show, so what should I do? What should I grab? And even though that sounds awful, yeah. <laughs> it's so much fun, that tension in a game. Right. So uh, during the game, players are going to be doing all these actions, these four basic actions, and grabbing these four basic cards. But at any time, a player can drop out, which is another one of the, the six main actions you can do, which is also hugely important in the game because turn order is necessary. And by turn, that, I mean... Key. Yeah, trying to figure out when to drop in, drop out at the right time because turn order, turn order works like this. The first player to drop out gets the most amount of money going into the next season. The second person gets a few less, and in a three-player uh, game, the last player to drop out gets almost no money. Yeah, very little compared. And they also get some viewers, too. So yeah, you, you, can take view, you can take viewers early. or the money throughout the game. It's, it's kind of your choice, depending on, you know, if you're sitting on a lot of money, mm -hmm. you might as well just take the five viewers if yeah. you're the first to drop out. But if you need money, you want to drop out first to grab that money to support the things you want to do in the next round. Yeah. Dropping out, once you drop out, you're out for the round, but it does give you the ability to go before anyone else in the previous round which yeah, is hugely important we, we, you know we've talked about this already for a little bit but it's it's it needs to be stressed timing in this game and in, in particular when you drop out is key if you have some shows that have aged right and you need to replace those in the next round you absolutely want to be the guy considering dropping out first forget the money you're getting you want to drop out first so you can be the first guy and have the first pick of the next shows right so once all the all the players uh, have dropped out there's four actions that are going to take place the first thing is you get you have to balance your balance sheet you yeah you, you get look your at income and you get your expenses paid depending on the um, the show uh, the stars you have and the ads that you have yeah you net that out and you're either taking money from the bank or, or you're paying some money right then you're going to score your lineups. Uh, so depending upon how long that show has been out, uh, you will get that many viewers. Right. And then you age your shows, which is the really the cool f part of the game, right? Shows typically, well, they only last four seasons. Right. Right? And they typically always go down in the number of viewerships. Right. And then one other thing, and not to jump ahead, we failed to mention earlier, when you develop a show, the show that gets replaced goes over into your reruns. Which is awesome. Which is where you're all gonna, also going to score some points. Now, you're only, you're only going to score one viewer because it's a rerun. Yeah. Um, but, it, again, it's one of those really cool thematic things because sometimes you're like, you kind of get attached to some of these shows. Like, I've right. had The Walking Dead for three seasons. Oh, oh, and, man, it's been a great run. And then, even though it's not worth anything, it's kind of sad to see that show go away, just yeah. like in real life. Right. So it goes over to the rerun runs and you're right. scoring just fewer points there right um so once you score your lineups you age your shows all of your shows go down uh which is the black marker on the shows that you see there um and then you set up the next season it's very simple because all these player boards uh depending on the number of players have how many stars ads networks and shows you need to put out from round to round yeah they did a fantastic job of developing this for one to five players yeah the, and and a lot of the information once you've played it once all the information you really need to know is right here on the board. It yeah. tells you how many cards. It tells you how to do the turn order because the turn order does change in a two and a one player game. Yeah. Uh, well, two player game anyway. Yeah. yeah. Um, and it's really smart the way they've done that and incorporated a lot of mechanics on some of the cards that really help those games uh, be more than just attack on. Uh, let's get to our cons. What yeah. Don't you like about the game? Well, I have to say, uh, nothing at all. <laughs> I, I, this, and it sounds like we're a couple of fanboys here, and we are, uh, but for good reason. This show, this this game has uh, very little to say. In fact, I for the last two days I've been trying to think. What can I say yeah. that I don't like about this game? It's just a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, it, it brings in a lot of great Euro elements to a theme that's, you know, not farming things. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I. I play a lot of games, and I know a lot of reviewers say everything is their favorite game. Um, but this really is. I, I've played probably 50 new games this year, 60 new games this year. A lot. And there is nothing really that comes close to this game. It, it pushes all the buttons that I like in a game. It requires you to constantly interact with other players, uh, to manage um, limited resources, 
and try to uh, manage a board that's constantly changing. The best way I can describe this game is that it's an engine building game that constantly stops. Yeah. Yeah, you constantly have to... Re- your, your engine's breaking down yeah, slowly, and you, you need go- to keep it... Keep it going by replacing with new shows, uh, new stars, new ads. So uh, most games that that I play, uh, especially Euros, you're building something uh, in your tableau, and the interaction is is sparse. This, or maybe not the interaction, but your your. The tension that you play, that you pay to other players, is, is sparse. In this game, I'm constantly looking to see what did David build, what does he need to fulfill certain conditions, and can I steal that from him? And what's cool is you can play it that way. You can also play it, you know. That what, when I take it to the table, there's a variety of different people that are playing, and some people just like to play their own little game. You don't have to look at what everyone else is doing. It's probably important to yes, do that. It is important. If someone yeah. else at the table is doing it. You should be doing it as well, but you can play the game and people have fun with it. Even if you end up losing this game, it is just fun, and anyone can uh, relate to these television shows yeah, and I the agree. concept of what you're doing. So even even the nasty parts of the game, and there aren't many uh, that I'd say are nasty, Not, but the interactive yeah. parts of the game that might you know annoy some people in other games are fun because the theme is wrapped around yeah, it. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a hugely entertaining game. Um, also it's incredibly awesome. incredibly intelligently designed. You know, a lot of these games that we've talked, and I think we mentioned this earlier, a lot of games with this theme or a more sort of uh, fun theme, television in particular, can be wrapped, built around the theme. Uh-huh. And when you build it around the theme, sometimes the game doesn't work out so well. This game is a fantastic game. And even in the abstract nature, mm-hmm. it's a fantastic game. And then when you weave it in with this theme, it makes so much sense, and it's just a fantastic experience yeah i I would agree it's it's largely sandbox too so there's a variety of different strategy strategies that you can take um yeah how you play the game yeah you can i mean i we've played games where people are going heavy on the ads um you know one other interesting thing is someone drops out because they want to and then you'll see the other person go okay i'll take this card and this card and this card right and you're like, oh, I, should, I dropped out too soon. Right. And again, even though that's like annoying on one level, it's just fun because you learn and then you don't do that again in the next round. Yeah. Um, I, this is going to be released at Gen Con. Yeah, right? for yeah. widely, yes. I would highly encourage everybody to go out and try this game. Um, I, I can't see that it wouldn't appeal to anybody. I mean, really, the game, the game is super simple to play. It's very easy to learn. It's it may look complex, but it's not. I mean, it, it's not yeah. complex at all. Yeah, it's not complex. I think I'm trying to think of what might turn anyone off. <laughs> you know, someone might look at the. I mean, I hate to say this because the art is fantastic. Yeah. I can imagine though, in this world that we live in, people who might not like silly art in their games. Right. Um, but you've got to embrace it with this game. This is it's it's meant to be that way. This game wouldn't be as good if it had serious art in it. No. Um, it's 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 tongue in cheek, and the game is just a lot of fun. If you're going to Gen Con and you're one of those people who are going to be running day one to grab a game, yeah, this should be a candidate for the where you run first. Yeah. in my opinion. Yeah, I, I would hundred hundred percent agree. Um, so again, please make comments below to win or have a chance to win the networks from yeah. us. Um, Again, like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, um, and thank you again for watching. I am Jeremy Salinas. I'm David Waybright. And we'll see you guys again. Thank you. Bye-bye.